really need to figure out how to open these videos. I don't know, just like I need a catchphrase or something like that. But um, until that time, I'll just awkwardly say hello and welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you my favorite zoom lenses for the GH5S. Now, these are not the best zoom lenses that you could absolutely buy. They're not even new lenses. They're quite old. There's actually newer versions of both of these lenses. I'm only going to be talking about two. I just gave that away. But they're just the ones that work for me and just for a variety of reasons. And I'll just kind of go over the pros and cons of, of using them. Uh, starting with this one, which is the Canon 16 to 35 f2.8 uh, version 2. This is the old version. This came out, I think, in the mid 2000s, sometime thereabouts. And there is a new uh, version 3. And by all accounts, it's much better than this lens. Um, this lens, I think, was never really widely regarded as kind of like the best design Canon's ever come up with. It's not overall that sharp, um, but I think for video, it's more than adequate, more than sharp enough. And I use this for real estate photography too. For that application, it works just fine. Like I said, or like I've probably mentioned before on multiple videos that most of the stuff that we do, that a lot of people are doing uh, in video production is going to the web. It's going to YouTube, it's going to Facebook, Instagram, or you know a client's web page or something like that. So. You know, we're not going on the big screen, we're not going to Netflix or anything like that. And if you had the budget, if you were doing those kinds of things, you would have the budget for much bigger camera rigs and more expensive lenses. But for the kind of work that I do, this is more than soft enough, more than sharp enough. <laughs> it's definitely soft enough. But you know, softness is also, can be a good thing when you're pairing it, especially with a camera like the GH5, GH5S, which can be a little bit too sharp for some people. The other reason I like it is just the focal length. Um, I'm a huge wide angle uh, fan. I love shooting wide. And with the 064 times speed booster at the 16 millimeter focal length, you're getting somewhere in the ballpark of about a 19 millimeter full frame equivalent. So you're still getting a really ultra wide lens, but it's also one that doesn't have a lot of distortion or it's not like a fisheye distortion. You know, you're still gonna get some lens distor distortion especially with the zoom lens, because it's got all those different focal lengths. You know, it's not optimized for any one given focal length. I really love ultra wides, but I also really love everything between 16 and 35. I think there's a time and a place, you know, the, for, for, a longer length, for longer lenses, for telephoto lenses, and they're great as well. But for me, like the vast majority of stuff I do, I'm living on kind of like the wide angle. So I just, I, I don't know, I just love the look of wide. I like getting close to people and, you know, just gives you more a sense of depth, I think, as opposed to just like, gives you a sense of just kind of being there, um, being more present in what's going on, as opposed to just looking from afar at something, almost like you're spying on people, which I think is kind of the, the look you can get with a longer, uh, longer lens, which we are going to cover because the other lens definitely goes into the telephoto range. With the benefit of the speed booster, you know, you obviously get that wider field of view that's really approaching a full frame field of view, but you also get that extra I think more than one stop of added light. So you get, you know, from a 2.8 all the way down to a 1.8 with this lens. So it's like, you know, having a 16 all the way to a 35 set of primes at f1.8, so pretty fast. I mean, it's not gonna be as sharp or as overall good quality as a set of really good primes, but you know, this one lens can do so much. Another reason why I'm talking about zoom lenses is because I've kind of like gone back and forth. I started out with a set of primes, like the Rokinon Cine primes, and I've sold all of them thinking that, you know, I'm just doing mostly like really fast paced run and gun type stuff, event work, and it just made more sense to have zoom lenses just in instead of just trying to, you know, swap out a bunch of lenses or, or trying to like move all over the place to get the framing that you want and the field of view that you want. It just makes sense to just trade in like all those primes and just get a couple of zooms. And that's pretty much where for all of my video production work, I'm 95% of the time just using zoom lenses. Okay, so that's enough on this one. The other one that I use, and this one I got pretty recently, I don't think I've ever featured this on the channel at all. So this is the 24 to 105 F4. And once again, this is the version two of this lens. There is a version three. And when I was looking at getting a 24 to 105, the consensus was that this one is overall still probably better than the version three because it is lighter and smaller it has a sharper image in the center, whereas the version three, it seems like Canon was trying to improve like sharpness across the entire, the entire field of view at the expense of some center sharpness. So with those trade-offs, I feel like the version two just makes more sense. And I was able to find a used one in pretty decent condition for like 500 bucks. This is definitely replacing 
this lens that I've had for several years now. This is the Lumix 12 to 35, and I've done I've featured this on the channel multiple times. It's always been a lens that I use quite a bit, but it's never been a lens that I really like. One of the reasons is just the 24 to 70 focal length for a zoom lens is just kind of like not that great, I don't think. So you're obviously overlapping quite a bit with the 16 to 35. You're, you know, you already have 24 all the way to 35 millimeters on this lens. So with a 24 to 70, that essentially leaves you with a 50 millimeter um, prime that you're not getting with the 16 to 35. And then you get a 70 millimeter, which isn't that long. So you're not even getting an 85 with it. So the 24 to 105, the big downside of, of the 24 to 105 is the fact that it's only an F4. But once again, pairing it with the 0.64 times speed booster, the F4 can open all the way up to an F2.5. So it effectively beats the 24 to 70 F2.8 in terms of light gathering capability and potential shallow depth of field abilities too. This lens, it definitely looks bigger I mean, it looks big and it is, but it's not that heavy. I really enjoy, I kind of prefer the bigger lenses, just the way they fit in my hand better. I don't have huge hands, but they're not tiny hands. And just these little lenses, I mean, this isn't the worst. I don't know, I just like the bigger grip, the bigger feel. It just makes the camera more substantial. Just helps you get, I think, more stable shots. You know, just fits in the palm of your hand really nicely and just gives you control over the lens. So I don't really mind the size of these Canon you know, full frame zoom lenses. Uh, so another really nice feature about this lens is that it has lens stabilization, which is great when pairing it with GH5S, which doesn't have IBIS. This lens obviously has a lot of range on the telephoto end. It goes all the way to 105. And the other thing too is, if you are shooting in 1080p with the GH5S, you do have the X teleconverter, which punches in and allows you to get even more length. You are stuck with 1080 on the GH5S just because there's not enough resolution. But if you were on the GH5, you could use that feature in 4K and get, you know, added reach with any lens that you have. So since I bought this a few months ago, like I've not used the 12 to 35 one time. Um, I still do find that this might be helpful sometimes on a gimbal, especially when sometimes I, in the past I've used autofocus. In certain situations, it's doable. With these lenses and the Metabones, you know, this not autofocus. There's no autofocus that's you know, and it's really even worth mentioning. So this is essentially just a manual focus only system. And the other reason that I really like using these older DSLR lenses is that they have uh, distance markings uh, on the focus. You know, you can actually see uh, where you are focused, both in feet and meters, which I just find helpful sometimes. You know, it's not always helpful, but sometimes when you're setting up shots, you know, you're gonna be racking focus. You know, it's, it's helpful to see, okay, I know that I need to come back to say 1.5 feet to get in focus when I am going to the second part or something like that. And they also have hard, they have soft stops. So you can keep spinning the ring indefinitely, but it will stop moving once you get to the minimum and maximum focusing distance. And you can also feel it when it hits that point. Uh, build quality on both of them is pretty good. Uh, this one, you know, is a little bit cheaper as an F4. It's not the same build quality, I think, as like their 2.8 lenses, but it still is the L-series lens with the red ring. Uh, both have big weather sealing gaskets on the back of them. Uh, this one, since it does telescope out, um, there is, you know, the potential of dust getting sucked in here, and there is dust inside the, I don't know, you know, who owned this before and how well they took care of it. But, you know, by and large, build quality is pretty good. They also both focus pretty closely. Uh, this one is labeled a macro lens, although it's not really anything to write home about, but it focuses down to about one and a half feet which puts it up pretty, you know, I think one good thing about Micro Four Thirds lenses natively is that all of them tend to really have close focusing, even if they're not labeled macro lenses. Usually they, I find that they can focus within a foot. So this is uh, not quite in the same league, but it's still pretty good for a full frame, especially. And then this 16 to 35 also has a really close focusing distance. And I can put the specifications up on the screen because I don't remember off the top of my head but I know I've done that before with this lens and this one can definitely focus pretty close as well. Both exhibit some focus breathing, although it's not the worst I've seen for full frame lenses, especially. I don't think it's anything that's like super distracting. Uh, neither one is parfocal by any stretch. Uh, you'll definitely lose focus as you zoom and have to refocus. So that's a bummer, but once again, that's not something that you typically find outside of like really high-end cinema lenses. Other negatives to mention is just basically with going with the speed booster, you are having an extra glass element between the sensor 
you know, and the lens, so you have the potential for having more reflections, more flares, um, more ghosting problems. I've never found that it was like anything that really bothered me any time that I'm shooting with a strong backlight. Sometimes I've had people just hold over, you know, block, try to block the sun or whatever the light is, usually the sun, coming into the lens just to avoid crazy flares. If it was something, usually it's only when it's like washing the image out that I think it's a problem. Usually if there's a flare in there, then it's probably okay. You know, it might look cool or something, but if it's like really reducing the contrast of the image, then um, getting rid of it is helpful. So that's it. These are the two lenses that I'm using, once again, 95% of the time on paid work. And that's just really a product of the kinds of stuff I do, which is just really fast paced, run and gun type stuff where it just helps to just have one or two lenses as opposed to a whole bunch. And we don't have time to set up shots, uh, swap out lenses, all that kind of stuff. Even when it's like an interview, I feel like these lenses are going to be plenty good enough, uh, enough shallow depth of field, especially with this lens, um, that I'm not really missing out on a prime. And again, you can easily adjust your field of view with a zoom as opposed to just having to swap out lenses or move your camera. You know, that sounds lazy, but it's really not. You know, you're just trying to maximize your um, efficiency and your effectiveness while on, sh on set, you know, and not take up a whole lot of time. So I hope that was helpful. If you've got any questions about these lenses or any other set, setup thing that I mentioned, uh, questions about speed boosters, obviously leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. As always, thanks for watching and see you in another video.